Our English teacher taught us I before E except after C. Our history teacher taught us that Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue back in 1492. And our science teacher got us to memorize the sequence of the planets with the cute expression, my very energetic mother just served us nine pizzas. <laughs> Although now that Pluto is no longer considered a planet, I suppose my mother served us Nutella? <laughs> Throughout our years of schooling, certain facts and concepts stuck with us. But no course was more impressionable upon me than environmental science. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, honored guests, fellow Toastmasters, and judges. Environmental science is a subject that I believe each and every person should have to learn about. After all, we do inhabit the Earth together, don't we? And we could start by remembering the three R's. They are reduce, reuse, and recycle. And being that this is a hierarchical structure, we will begin at the very top with the single most influential thing that you can do to preserve this planet, reduce. The age-old adage goes, bigger is better. To have more, you are better off. But I will give one prime example of where this is simply not the case. The United States food production. In the year 2014, the United States of America threw away one-third of all produce that was grown before it was ever consumed. Let's take a step back for a second and let that sink in. I mean, this would be the equivalent of going down to your local grocery store, picking up three bags of groceries, and when you're on your way to your car, dropping one of those bags and never returning to pick it up. Sure, we can think of the monetary value that has been lost with this practice, but let's take it a step further and consider our environmental impact. By a show of hands, how many members of the audience commute daily? Excellent. And I know that I do. I do a whole lot of driving. For those of us who spend times on the roads, we will inevitably be driving along and pew, smell that awful stench emulating from the garbage dumps on the side of the road. Contributing to this odor is all of the produce that we throw away. And after piles and piles of trash compile on top of that produce, greenhouse gases begin to percolate and form and go into our atmosphere. And we now know that these greenhouse gases are a key contributor to our global climate change epidemic. The year 2014 was the hottest year on record, and the year 2015 surpassed it by far. Ladies and gentlemen, let us end this trend, and it starts by reducing. Once we've done all that we can to reduce, we can move on to the second most influential thing that we can do to preserve this planet, reuse. I noticed at breakfast today, many of us grabbed one of those disposable water bottles from the back, and I commend our efforts to live a healthier lifestyle. But what upsets me is I would venture to guess the vast majority of us are going to throw that bottle out after a single use. And I beg the question, why? Why not clean it, refill it, recap it, and reuse it? Let's say you got 10 more uses out of a single disposable water bottle. That's 10 times less plastic that we're throwing away. I implore each and every one of you, the next time you go to throw an item away, take a second look at it and ask yourself, can I get more use out of this? If so, do so. You will make the difference. And if you could make the ultimate sacrifice, how about investing in a hard plastic water bottle for about $3 that you could refill as many times as you'd like? <sighs> Delectable. <laughs> Once we've done all that we can to reuse, we can then move to the third most influential thing that we can do to preserve this planet, <clears throat> recycle. One of the biggest misconceptions about being environmentally friendly is that recycling is the be-all and end-all of being green. But as we now know, it's at the bottom of the totem pole. It's our last resort. Luckily for us, our local communities and universities offer recycling services. But what most people are unaware of is that their local municipality plants also take a myriad of other items that we, all, we, that we would otherwise consider non-recyclable, such as batteries, light bulbs, chemicals, electronics, the list goes on and on and on. Heck, even public supermarkets will take back your old plastic bags and styrofoam containers that you're no longer using. Do your due diligence, do your research, and recycle wherever you can. 
you could make the difference. But for those of us that say, I don't want to be bothered with all this recycling nonsense, I ask, where do you think that plastic water bottle goes when we throw it in the regular trash? A landfill? Perhaps. But how about our oceans? Currently, in the Pacific Ocean, there is a mass of plastic larger than the size of the state of Texas. And the Environmental Protection Agency just released a study that shows that our current levels of waste, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish by the year 2050. Ladies and gentlemen, more plastic than fish in the oceans? This is a call to action. If there is one area for human beings to find common ground, it is the ground that we commonly stand on together. And it starts by us making a difference as individuals by remembering the three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Please say it with me, everybody. Reduce, reuse, recycle. One more time. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Oh yeah! Music to my ears, thank you participants. And I would love to conclude with a quotation from American astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, who once eloquently put, the beauty of science is it is true, whether you believe it or not. Contest master. <laughs>